So in the last video, we were talking about the OSGI framework and we talked a little bit about bundles. Now let's take a, a deeper dive, a deeper look into what are bundles. Now we define bundles as the basic unit of modularity or the building blocks of an application. We talked about how in order to create a bundle, we need a manifest file with some specific headers and then we package it as a jar file. Now we're gonna be talking about that manifest file and specifically how do we use it to identify a bundle with hundreds and thousands of bundles within Liferay, how do we differentiate one bundle from another? So within the manifest file, we're going to be having two specific headers that helps us do that. This is going to be the bundle's symbolic name and the bundle's version number. So those two parts is what creates the identifier. Any one of those two parts uh, differ from another bundle that creates a unique bundle. Even if the contents of the bundle inside are the same, if we're defining a different bundle name or a different bundle version from another one, they are going to be unique. The important aspect here is going to be that uniqueness of the symbolic name. So you can have multiple versions of the same bundle existing within the OSGI container. Now, when we're dealing with uh, the versioning of our bundles, we're gonna be using semantic versioning. So major, minor, micro, and then finally the qualifier. What are kind of the differences between these four? Traditionally, when we're doing, uh, when we're using semantic versioning, when we're, uh, when we're changing the major version number, this means there's gonna be a breaking change in the API. So if the major version is from one to two, they are not compatible. Since the API changed so drastically, it caused the major version to increment. Again, we are the ones responsible for that. A minor change, so this is the second digit. This is a change that does not break the API, but it is a change in the API. So that's something to be aware of. The micro does not change any compatibility issues. Maybe it's a very simple change, right? Maybe the property, or maybe you typoed something and then you changed it or fixed it. And so it doesn't warrant a minor, this can be a micro. So maybe you're working through some very minor differences between versions, but you need a way to distinguish one from another. So this is where you can use the qualifier. The qualifier itself does not signify any impact or any changes in regards to compatibility. So um, those are strictly used to identify one bundle from another where everything else might be the same. Uh, let's talk about how we're able to hone in on specific versions. So with the idea of versions, you wanna be able to pick one version over another. So this can be done using square brackets or parentheses. Uh, if we're using square brackets, we're saying we can include this version number. If we're using parentheses, this just means we are excluding that version number. So the example here, we see that version 1.1 is included since we see the bracket there, but version 2.0 is excluded because we see the parentheses right there. So some examples of uh, bundle versions. So here in bundle one, we see that there is a package that's being exported and it has a specific version number, one, two, three, and then the timestamp. We can then in a different bundle import that package. So you can see uh, here in bundle two, we're importing a specific package and then the version number is including 1.2, but excluding 2.0. So this is just some examples of how we can export a package with a specific version number, and then we can import another package using uh, this syntax here to really hone in or key in on a specific version number. So that wraps it up for semantic versioning. In the next video, we're gonna be taking a look at the bundles lifecycle.